G'day fishy folks. Welcome back to another episode of Cookies Fish Room. My name is Norm. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you are all well wherever you are in this part of the beautiful world. Um, today I will be discussing with you uh, a topic that has come up quite a bit on Cookies Fish Room on Facebook and I have been getting a lot of questions about this. VHS aka septicemia. Um, I have experienced this a lot myself um, and basically this is a very common occurrence with fish, uh, marine, freshwater, both. There's over probably over 50 different uh, species of fish that will suffer from this awful disease and it's not something very easy to overcome. And I thank you all for joining me. And thank you again for those who've subscribed to us. And to those who have not yet, please do so. Hit that notification bell so you know every time we bring out a video that is here to help you. And thank you once again for those who already have. Now, quickly, let's talk about this really awful disease. It is one that I have had to deal with, unfortunately, that actually gets through quarantine quite easily. Um, it's something that we really can't quarantine for, and thus it's not really covered in the Cookies Fish Room quarantine process. So basically, first question is, what is it? It is, you will see, how, or how do you notice your fish has it? It's that red, bright red um, blotchiness that your fish gets where it looks like it's been bruised or it has a bleeding just underneath the skin. Um, it's an awful sight when you see it, it's hard to miss. It can also, it happens anywhere on the fish where it has blood vessels, basically. And basically, you must be thinking to yourself, how in the world does my fish get this when I quarantine for it? And it's something that you often get without even realizing the fish has it. You can wake up one morning and there it is. So it could come with, in a couple of instances, it comes with age sometimes. Uh, the, older, let's, the older the fish gets, the weaker its blood vessels get. It's just like humans, they get varicose veins. Unfortunately, our blood vessels do get weaker as we as we get older. And with fish, it's the same thing. As they get older, they also have weakened blood vessels. Now, another way of getting it is just through particles in the water as a disease. Um, it comes through where you get your fish from sometimes or somewhere the fish has been or another fish that has it. It can be acquired from a fish that's already gotten and died in a tank and your other fish will eat that fish. So one good practice, two good practices, I should say, to avoid this is one, never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances, putting any water from your local fish shop into your fish tank. You do not know what diseases they have, what treatments they have had put into that, medications they have put into that water and diseases like uh, colnaris, uh, septicemia, um, even, you know, even ick or epistolus, they can all be carried through the water column. So just be very careful with those. Never put the water in there. Other thing is, another good practice is to make sure if any fish dies in your fish tank for whatever reason it may be, old age, disease, or whatever reason, get it out straight away as quick as you can. So not only will you have nitrates, ammonia, and all that jazz to deal with, but you will also have diseases passed on to the other fish. Now, if you can get rid of that fish real quick, you, re you reduce the chances of having that disease spread to the other fish. So that's how they acquire it. Um, basically, how it gets in the water in the first place is through um, broodstock and birds that carry it. Um, it's not really deadly to them, but it is to fish. So just by them drinking in the water or their feces in the water, that's another way it gets into it. Um, basically these guppy farms or fish farms have, a lot of them are, are outdoor. They get poop in it or fish or birds come and drink out of the water or cattle, whatever it is. And then your fish ends up with it. So that's how it gets into the water. It gets into the fish via its gills. So the particles gets taken in by the gills. Um, it attacks the gills first, moves on to the inner organs, and then that's similar to what colonaris does. And then once it hits the inner organs, it's dispersed through the body via the blood vessels. It breaks down those blood vessels, weakens them, and then you start getting those blotches. Once it gets those blotches, once it has that disease, 
there's no way to save your fish, unfortunately. There is no cure. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. There's no, no treatment, no cure, nothing that you can do for that, that fish, basically. If it is VHS, aka septicemia, you do not want your fish to get this. So by all means, try and keep the best, the best thing you can do is what I mentioned about not introducing new water to your tank from external sources and not to keep dead fish in your tank. And the other thing is always keep great quality of water. If you have a pond outside, it could be a bit hard to avoid it. It's common for people with ponds to, to basically get this disease in their goldfish or some with guppies at this time of the year, especially in the US, um, in the Northern Hemisphere. My good friends up there are sitting up their guppy ponds. And if you have not yet seen Michael's fish room, check out his latest videos. He is looking, he's setting up some guppy ponds at the moment. It's worth a watch. Have a look at it. Um, yeah, but tr there's nothing you can do. Keep your water parameters clean. Change your water as much as possible if you think that you may have it. Don't do too many water changes. It will, no matter what people say, it will crash your cycle if you change your water too much. There is an amount of beneficial bacteria that is um, kept in the water column. Yes, majority of it is on surfaces and in your filter and your filter wool pads, but there is an amount that is carried inside the water column. Now, I, I can't stress enough um, how it is important to continue your quarantine process regardless that it doesn't cover it. Keep your water changes up and hopefully, hopefully, nobody out there has to experience this anytime soon. And if you have, I'm really sorry. So, hope you're all well. Hope you are having a good time wherever you are in this wonderful world of ours. We are having a beautiful day here in sunny Melbourne in Australia. It is great. Um, we are about, we're halfway through um, autumn at the moment and I am a winter man myself so I can't wait to, you know, get the colder weather so I can jump in bed and, you know, Netflix and chill. So hopefully you guys all are having a great time wherever you are check out our next video that's coming up it will be about drip drip uh, drip drip acclimating and i've got a little setup ready to go to show you guys how it's done it's very simple and how important acclimating is to fish after you've bought them so thanks for joining us one more time take care of yourselves and don't forget if you haven't jumped on yet to cookies fish room on facebook jump on become a member say hi and if you have any issues, don't forget to tag any of the admin team. We're here and happy to help you. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.